Hi everyone, Joel Dudley from R3 here. Today I'm going to talk to you about a new feature that's coming in quarter 4.6, so the Q3 2020 release, which is the ability to start a flow with a unique ID. So we'll talk in this video about why you'd want to do that, and make sure you also check out some of the other videos in the release notes for the 4.6 release, because there's a lot of other features coming as well in terms of the management of flows, the retrying of flows as well. So as I said, today we're going to talk about starting flows by passing in a unique identifier. And this isn't something you could do in 4.5 or before. And to give you an example, I've created this very simple flow here. It's this double my number flow. So it doesn't behave like a normal flow. It just does something very simple, which is that you construct it passing in an input number here. And then when you call the flow, it takes your input number that you pass in the constructor and doubles it. So very simple, but it's just here for the sake of example. And what I'm going to show you is how we can start this flow um, using the old way of starting flows, the traditional way, which still works and works perfectly fine for most use cases, but then also using the new approach where you pass in a unique identifier. So here I've defined a very simple RPC client. So you can see here I have a client class main method. I'm creating an RPC client starting it, I'm getting the proxy so it can interact with our running node. And I'm going to show you two ways of starting flows, the old way and the new way. So the new way is here, and this is the standard way of starting flows. It's still completely valid. You know, loads of production cord apps are built using this method, obviously. And it's just this method you'll be familiar with. So RPC ops, start flow dynamic, you pass in the name of the flow, you pass in the argument, and you get the return value. And that works fine. It starts the flow. You get a flow handle back, which allows you to track the progress of the flow over time. But there's a few shortcomings with this approach. So one is there's no protection against duplicate flow starts. So let's say there's a user error or there's an error in your client code, then you could accidentally trigger the same flow to start twice. And if, for example, you were transferring a very large amount of money or doing some other action you would never want to perform twice, this can be a problem. So there's no protection against that when you start the flow in this way. The other thing is, if you, when you start a flow in this way, you get back what's called a flow handle. And the flow handle is a Java object that you can use to track the progress of the flow and eventually get the result of the flow. The problem with this method is if for some reason you lose that flow handle, so you flood, throw it away in your code, or more likely the RPC connection breaks, then there's no way to retrieve that flow handle. And that means there's no way to check the progress of the flow thereafter. There's no way to get the result of the flow, which can often be important, right? Sometimes you want to know whether the flow was successful or not, or you want to get back some object from the flow. But also, you don't know if the flow started correctly. So if you get an RPC break at the wrong time, it can be impossible to determine using this method whether the flow started and went through correctly, or whether it didn't start and you need to trigger it again. And this is where you can, again, start to have some problems with duplicate flow starts. So what we've added in quarter 4.6 is a second way, really, of starting flows. And this is this approach here. So you define some unique ID. This could come from some external system. You could have your own service for generating these, what have you. And then you can start flow dynamic with client ID. And here you pass in the unique ID first, the name of the class, and then the arguments as before. And this has a couple of benefits. So if you have this unique identifier around, then you can do a couple of things. The first thing you can do is you can reattach to flow with client ID. So you can take that client ID that you already have, and you can use this method to reattach to that flow. And when we say reattach to a flow, what we really mean is just recover the flow handle object for that flow. And so then you can start to track the progress of that flow again once you have that flow handle back. And you can also wait and get the return value once it's complete. So here we're blocking on the return value and we're checking that the return value is 12, right? Because it's a flow that doubles your number and it's six. So previously you couldn't do that. Once you'd lost the flow handle, the flow handle was lost forever. There was no way to check the progress or to get the result. But now you can do it. So you can just reattach with the unique ID and you start waiting on the flow again. You can start monitoring the progress again. It's great. And then the second big benefit is that it becomes very difficult to start a flow twice. 
So if you pass in the same unique ID again, and here we start to flow with client ID, and we're re-invoking the flow with the same unique ID here, right? So we kicked it off here with one unique ID, and then we're reusing that unique ID down here. Well, that's not gonna work. What's gonna happen is you'll just get back the existing flow handle instead. So instead of, let's say, kicking off two very high value transfers by mistake and transferring someone some money twice, it'll only happen once, and the second time you'll just get back the flow handle. So this is great, this means that you have some protection against user error and client error in terms of starting a flow twice. But it also means if you start a flow, but then your RPC client crashes and you start up again and you're not sure whether to start the flow again, well, as long as you know what unique ID you used for starting the flow, then you can just reuse that and there's no risk. If the flow hadn't been started, it will start as normal. But if it had been started, you'll just get back the old version. Now, the management of the IDs is completely up to the user or the client application. Corda can't tell you how to do that. So you need to provide a system for defining your own IDs. It could just be, you know, um, an increasing counter or it could be some meaningful string to your business application. And you also have to do cleanup of these IDs. So the reason we don't do the cleanup automatically is that we don't know for how long you're going to want to come back and retrieve the flow handle or the result of an existing flow. So we don't want to clean them up eagerly ahead of time and put you in a position where you want to retrieve the result of a previous flow, but it's now been cleaned up. So instead, currently, that's left to the user. So you have to um, call remove client ID and pass in the unique ID you had to get rid of that flow ID. And then finally, you have this utility method, finish flows with client IDs, which just allows you to retrieve any flows that are finished um, and that were started with client IDs, but that haven't been cleaned up yet. So it's as simple as that really, just four methods to know about. So start dynamic, flow dynamic with client ID, passing in that unique ID, reattaching to an existing flow to get the handle back, and then the cleanup that you can do as well. And so obviously both methods are valid. You can use the old method, the um, start flow dynamic, and just start flows in that manner. That's completely fine, a kind of far and forget approach. But if you need to protect against duplicate flow starts, because for some business reason, starting the same flow twice is very dangerous, or if you need to um, perhaps handle the fact that there may be a drop in your RPC connection to your node and you want to recover the, the, um, the result of that flow or the progress tracker steps of that flow, then you can use this new approach, start flow dynamic with client ID, and that allows you to retrieve the, um, the flow handle after the flow started and also prevents you from starting the flow twice. So that's an overview of this feature. As I said, it's just one of the features coming in quarter 4.6, so make sure you check out the other explainer videos and the release notes to see what else is coming in this release. Thanks, everyone.